Hello, and thanks for joining us at Thirsty Thursday Toys. Today we're going to be looking at the Jurassic Park Transformers crossover figure set and making a drink that I call the Explorer 4, the name and appearance taken from the ill-fated tour vehicle from Jurassic Park. For this drink, you will need sweet green melon liqueur, a tropical blue punch schnapps, whatever you find that's closest to that, pulp-free OJ, pineapple rum, a strawberry-flavored ice cream syrup. Now, I tried this with grenadine. It did not work as well, so I recommend the syrup. A rocks glass or other shorter, wider glass. A separate container to pour from. Your measuring glass or tool. Spoon and some ice, which I don't have out here because it's still in the freezer. So we're going to make this drink in three separate parts. First part, you're going to need your smaller container here. We're going to add two shots of the sweet green melon liqueur. One, two, there we go. Then about a half shot of your tropical blue, right there. Then a half shot of your OJ, right there. Pour that in. Then you're going to want to set this in your fridge to chill for a bit. Now while we're waiting for that layer to chill, we can go ahead and fill this one up. We'll need two shots of OJ. And one shot pineapple rum. When that green layer is nice and chilled, you can go ahead and take that out of the fridge. Take an ice cube, set it in the yellow layer, and you're going to carefully and slowly, making sure you don't spill much of this onto the table, pour the green layer right onto the ice cube. And that way it should sink down to the bottom. Carefully remove the ice cube with the spoon. All right, last but not least, we need the red. You can squeeze directly from the bottle, but I need a little more control since I'm doing this from behind the camera, so I'm gonna pour it from a spoon. And carefully. Go. Let's just get three. Cheers. All right, so this set came in this cardboard packaging, but they stuck shipping labels like here and here, which covered up some of the stuff. Not at all important to me, but um, hardcore collectors might take issue with that. Uh, I'm not sure what this says here, but this is Psyoc, which means um, shipped in own container. So that means they're just gonna slap labels right on this instead of sticking the box in a box in another box. So I'm really glad they did not stick any labels on this thing. I kind of don't want to take this out of the package. I might buy another one just to keep like this. You have the crossover kind of logo there, Jurassic Park over here. The name of both characters, I love how you have an Autobot and a Decepticon. We knew we were going to get the T-Rex, did not know we were going to get this. I've been working on a custom of one of these for, I don't know, like a decade. But now I don't need to. Top of the package looks like the Jurassic Park gates. You have that Transformers Generations logo over here. Got the 10,000 volts sign over here. Same thing on the other side, but with the authentic Transformers logo there. The back has the footprint and some information. In five languages, it says, Tyrannicon Rex is loose. Repeat, Tyrannicon Rex is loose. Do not panic. Autobot JP-93 has been dispatched and is equipped to handle the situation. With state-of-the-art GPS tracking systems and all-wheel drive for transversing bumpy jungle terrain, JP-93 will track down the asset out of containment and return her to her paddock promptly. If you see Tyrannicon Rex, do not approach her. Please call Jurassic Park Security when you are safely out of range. Now, when I purchased this, it was an Amazon exclusive. It seems to have popped up on other places. I'm not sure about its exclusivity or if it's going to come back in stock in these places. Hopefully, everyone has a chance to get one because this is spectacular. It's a shame to do this, but I got to take it out. I got to do it. All right, let's cut her loose. Oh, there we go. Also, inside the box, once you open this up, Look at that, little uh, Mr. DNA hiding in there. And he is on the flap on this side and the flap on the back side. And underneath, look at that, there's that license plate. Let's get a close up. There it is, Explorer 4. The packaging is a little deeper, but also a little shorter than the Legacy T-Rex escape box. Some instructions in there. They've got some color on the instructions there, that's nice. I love how they have that Jurassic Park font, but they have it for all the numbers. That's fun. I like that. This folds out into a whole giant poster. That is gonna be fun. Here is the whole thing. I need to find a way to remove these from the package without destroying the display. 
And this is just um, cardboard. Ooh, okay. You got that Jurassic Park T-Rex. You got some other skulls on there. Holy crap, okay. So I was just thinking about that pattern and I have this messenger bag from like Loot Crate or something. On the inside, look at that. That's cool. I wonder if that's like an official thing moving forward. I don't know, that's sweet. All right, let's help these escape. It's a little smaller than I expected. Oh, and it's got some clear rubber bands over here. And I like to cut these just in case my cat gets a hold of it. Let's get you out. Oh my gosh. One, two, three. How did that happen? There we go. Ooh, this feels like, this is not the usual plastic. This is kind of a, a rubber. Is it like that on the other? I, I don't have the Megatron to compare it to, so I don't know if that's the same material, but this is neat. Kind of replicates that like uh, dino skin feel almost of some of the earlier figures. But wait, there's more. There's a little weapon right here. <laughs> oh, it's like Muldoon's gun. First, we're gonna look at this without all like the plastic bits. Unlike some previous Jurassic packages, these plastic parts are taped underneath on the backside instead of on the top here. So you can remove the tape from the backside, just carefully pull these out. You do have these holes, and there is some tape on this side. Not entirely sure why, but uh, still works as a display. Now obviously you're allowed to mix all the flavors together. It's gonna look this kind of not very appetizing color, but it's gonna taste delicious. All right, so this set is rad. One thing I like to do when I get a new Transformer is try to transform it without instructions. I like the mental challenge and I like seeing if I can figure out based on like the specific joints how it might all be engineered. I appreciate those aspects of the figure. I just went through, transformed both of these and I'm excited. Oh, this is pretty sweet. So let's look at our Autobot JP93 first, get her out of the way. So this is like a deluxe class car. I thought it would be Voyager, but you know what? The deluxe works just fine. Fits on my shelf better. You've got that beautiful red to green to yellow color scheme, the Jurassic Park name printed on the side, the 04 stamped on the back. No license plate, but I'm sure we'll get some like repro labels or something. Teeny tiny down here does say Explorer XLT. God, that detail is superb. Tiny little windshield wipers. Love me some painted rims. Now these doors do open, kind of. It doesn't keep the window with it, but you know, you do have that option. So we have Jurassic P over here with the arc. Um, but on this side, we have Jur, Asic Park. And they did that thing where you have like this kind of really dark window here. So it's not clear, but at least you don't see all the kibbles inside, bits and what, what, what is the, what's the phrase for that? Underneath you have your basic deluxe class appearance. But the weapon here, it has this little notch, and that can fit right around here. So you can just plug that in, and it stays very well. Nice clearance on the roll there. Doesn't roll all that well, because the wheels are kind of tight, but I'll take it. Now the instructions here also show that you can mount the gun on the roof of the car. There are two slots on the roof here, and this tab can fit into either one of those slots. And it holds tight. Now when I did this on my own, the steps I took were in a different order than the instructions, but for the sake of this video, I will do it from the instructions. Start by opening up those doors, then underneath, pull out these arms. I'll show you that from the side. You see the arms are folded down in here. Pull that up and out, and take the hood and pull that down, and the head should pop out of here. This little piece lifts up, giving room for the head. Then this front section here can pull up. It's on this double joint here. Then you can pull the legs out back like so. And I love this bit of engineering. So let's separate the legs here. This piece right here, this flips out and folds all the way around, becoming the bottom of the feet. And that goes for both. So that adds this nice flatness to the bottom of the feet and it has ankle tilts. And you have this knee bend here. Awesome. So that's, that's the lower half. Now up here, you're going to rotate these arm shoulder pieces all the way around. They do kind of snap into place. Rotate the arms down. The fists are just folded up inside. And those lock open as well. You can fold this bit all the way up to give extra room for the head. This bit here tabs inside that slot there. Holds nice and tight. 
push this back down so it's nice and flush. You've got these wings here. There is a tab on the roof here that will go right into this back piece, just like so. Get those arms all adjusted. There you have your JP93. Let's give it a gun. The elbow joints on mine feel a little loose. I feel like they, they move too easily. Oh yeah, you can see it's kind of hard to hold up the weight of the gun. Now there are easy ways to fix that with the ball joints. I'm not too concerned. Now I'm assuming the head is supposed to be Alan Grant. You still have the hollow inner thighs. It doesn't bug me, but I know it bugs a lot of people. Very hollow inside of here. You do have these kind of chunks on the backpack, hollow inside here. So if those are things that bug you, uh, I'm sorry. You might not like this as much. All right, for articulation, we already talked about the ankle joints. We talked about the knee joints. We've got this thigh swivel here. We've got this ball joint in the hip. There's no waist articulation. Don't snap that. You've got these shoulder joints here and full rotation here. You've got the kind of loose elbow joint and that kind of wrist does not rotate around here, just folds in. These wing door things can kind of wiggle a bit. Head is kind of on a ball joint. It can look up and down a little bit. Rotate side to side. It looks like you can pop it off. I don't want to risk breaking it. It has this black piece back there. I don't know if that's supposed to be like for light piping and then they just made it black or what. You can totally take the goggles from that Legacy set and kind of squeeze them around the head here. Now it's got night vision. You know what? So we have our, uh, our Amber Collection Grant. Let's take this. That can go... Oh, see it's a little, uh, little smaller, but you can, I guess, slip that in there. Good enough. Now we definitely need repaints of Slash. The instructions also show that this tab right here can fit into this slot in the rifle. And that should just peg in like so. And you can store the rifle right back here in robot mode. Nice. Alright, to transform it back, pop those fists back in. Make sure your ankles are flush. Get those soles right back up there. These can tab together. Untab the roof. Separate the torso there. You might need to reach up underneath to pop this part out. There we go. Now the head can get back in. Rotate the shoulders back around here. Legs can fold back around there. Make sure you fold this piece down. Then you can tab the rest of the roof in with the hood. Make sure that part locks in. Underneath, these arms can rotate around and fit right in here. There we go. They don't tab in or anything, but there's plenty of room. Then just close those doors. Make sure everything's tabbed in nice and tight. And they do tab in nice and tight. There we go. And that is a better comparison. Here's our crossover crew, at least all the ones that I currently own. And vehicle modes. That's fun. On to Tyrannicon! This thing is beautiful. I know it's still the Megatron head and not the Jurassic Park T-Rex head sculpt. It's got that gap in the teeth there, but I still like it. I like the way they've colored it. And I really like this rubber material that they've got going on here. The whole, the whole thing. It's awesome. It's a nice flexible rubber. That's a pretty decent scale, right? Kind of close enough? Um, yeah. All right, in dino mode. You've got this kind of wiggle in the tail here. Can't really go up and down, but it can move side to side. Same with this. This can move side to side here. So you can turn it a bit like so. The legs, I love the way these are engineered. You've got nice range of motion here, in the knees as well, and some in the ankles. There's also these holes in the bottom of the feet, so you can put it on a stand if you want. Also, I love that they still added detail on the bottom. Now here in the belly, I can't get these to stay in all the way. Not the end of the world because you can't really see it, but that is one thing I don't like about it. The arms are made of that same rubber, and they are on a ball joint, so you can move them any which way you'd like. The head, lower jaw can open and close, and this whole front part of the head can go up and down. This part can also move up and down. You've got this flap here to allow for some more motion, but 
Then you have this gap here, and kind of move in and out like so. Enough to have fun with. According to the instructions, we move this head back for some reason. Then you can lift these up, so both of these can lift up, and you can still rotate these around. So you'll turn these around this way. Now these are on this little piece inside this C, and that allows them to rotate around. And you'll flip the tail around. These circular bits pop out. So I'll show you that from the side here. Pop out. So now you have that clearance. These can rotate around. So just rotate that up, and then you can press them in. Move the whole leg back, like so. And this piece is tabbed in here, and you can untab that, lift that up. Then you have these red bits here. These are double jointed. You can carefully pop these out and down, and these do peg together right there in the middle, just like so. There we go. Now we've got our legs. Take this belly, split it apart. Now these, these might pop down. They are on springs, but they do also clip up here. But for the sake of transformation right now, make sure they spring down. Then this outer part, you can see it's connected by a multi-jointed system here that can fold down and in, down and in. Then this whole assembly here can rotate. You'll want to rotate this head out here. And I'll show you that from another angle. There we go. Then along this joint here, you're going to rotate this up. Here's that from the front. That'll just rotate up. So this part here will lock into the waist along this piece. So just get that in there. Lock it in. Nice and sturdy. Then along the back here, you'll put these arms in. Both of them there. This piece is also double jointed here. So this will fold up and this will rotate in. And if you can see, it has these clips here that'll clip around here. I feel a little nervous clipping that in, so be a little careful. There it goes. Then this piece here can just fold on down. T-Rex head, rotate that down. You can open the mouth. Then for this arm, rotate this bottom of the tail piece around. Bring this piece down so it makes this kind of claw. This front piece can untab and fold back here. Now my rubber bit gets caught there, so I'm just gonna push that in. There we go, now it can fold all the way. Same on the back side. Nice detail along there. And that reveals the fist. There is our Tyrannicon Rex. This one does have waist articulation. You've got that articulation in the hips, knee joints, a slight ankle tilt, but you do have this forward and back motion on the ankle. Nice range of motion in both arms. And the fist here can actually fold up. And inside the mouth, there is this port. So you can like plug in the gun in there. So you have this T-Rex holding the gun. The head is interesting. I'm not quite sure what they were going for there. I like it. Kind of Grimlock Dinobot-esque. This head is also on a ball joint. Yeah, you can see that right in there. So that should pop off pretty easily. Not sure what head you'd put on there, but, oh, hold on. So there's our nice glossy head. That's, that's terrible. There you go. How's that with the flare? Not bad. All right, to transform this guy back, fold this bit up, carefully untab this back piece. Oh, I'm so nervous. Not broken, still good. Whew. Rotate this head back around there. Turn this part of the tail around, fold these pieces down, and these do tab right into the arm on both sides, and this piece can fold in, and this also tabs right into the arm. There we go. Rotate that back around. These leg panels can pop out, rotate back around in here, untab that waist, push this head piece back in, fold these parts out, both sides. Take this section, rotate this around so that the head is facing up, and fold that back in. Separate the legs, adjust them back into their sides here, one and two. This piece plugs right into there, then you can move the legs down like so, 
rotate these pieces out, and they should stay, should being the keyword. Then just fold this down and try to connect the belly together. And there are these little tabs here on both sides of the belly, and they do, in theory, plug into this piece. They don't stay very long, but they do plug in. Make sure the head lines up nice. You can put that back down. These don't line up all that well, but not the end of the world to me. Rotate the tail back. Rotate these into place. And pop them around. Same way on the other side. Make sure that's in the middle. And push it around until it pops into place. Bring the arms down. You've got a T-Rex. There's our Tyrannicon Rex and our Legacy T-Rex. Here's the two of them. And here's Slash for good measure. I mean, that's, that's a pretty sweet display. And I love how even though Hasbro lost the Jurassic Park license, and for, for good reason, they still had the chance to make this. Not that this makes up for any of their Jurassic World T-Rex designs, but it's absolutely a start. And here's the inner packaging from the Legacy set. I think it works a little bit better because it's taller. And that's the Jurassic Park Transformer crossover figure set. I really hope you can get your hands on one of these. In the meantime, thanks for subscribing, good luck on your hunt, and please drink responsibly.